Hi, this is Gordon Young with Maximum PC Magazine. We're here to check out Digital Storm's new Black Ops Enix. And obviously it's uh, based on Silverstone's really cool FTO3 case that we previewed on the site a few weeks ago. This, uh, for people who don't know, is a micro ATX case that really kind of builds everything up. Um, if you haven't seen the preview of the case, this is going to be a real treat for you. You pop up the front grill, take the front off, as you can see, everything goes straight up instead of out. So this takes up very little space. All the cables come out on the top, the power cable comes out on the side, and you can actually jam this into an incredibly small amount of uh, desk space. Of course, you need a lot of space on top. One issue I will note that I didn't notice with the uh, FTO3 a few weeks ago is when the top is on the case, you know, you tend to want to put stuff on top. This has this grill, you probably don't want to do that. The other issue is these buttons are kind of easy to hit. So if you set your cup of coffee or your Diet Coke on here, you may reset your machine by accident. So watch out for that. Uh, the cool thing is, Digital Storm tried to cram as much hardware into this case. It's got a uh, Sandy Bridge 2600K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. More on that later. And two GTX 580 cards. These are the fastest cards out right now. Two of them pretty much gives you top line performance other than running three GTX uh, 580 cards. Um, eight gigs of RAM. Of course, they're 120 gig SSD and a, a one terabyte Western Digital Drive. On the processor, uh, the interesting thing so, uh, Digital Storm did is they overclocked this to 4.7 gigahertz, but they also left Turbo Boost on. So this machine will actually uh, give you 4.7 gigahertz base clock and will overclock to 5.2 gigahertz. I've actually run a lot of performance benchmarks on this. I haven't stress tested it yet, but I will tell you it's pretty fast. In fact, it's actually faster than the Falcon Northwest. Sandy Bridge system in a more traditional tower case we looked at, as well as faster than the uh, I by Power Paladin case. Both of those were full size cases, so it's a lot, uh, actually, pretty impressive to get that kind of performance out of a micro ATX case. Of course, a lot of that is done because you know we have the, core, the cards mounted vertically, so all the heat gets vented out the rear of the case, which you know kind of lets it run a little cooler than other cases. Um, I will tell you though, it does get a little loud under load, uh, especially uh, when you're you're running both, hammering both video cards a lot. Those cards you run up the RPM on the fans. So it does get a little loud. It's not a bad noise. It's not like a, a, a really shrill, uh, small fan noise. It's kind of a, you know, it's not bad, but I will tell you it's a little loud. Um, the one other issue, of course, is people are going to go, well, this is a Sandy Bird system. Aren't you running a, a, a six series chipset? And yes, this is running a six series chipset like the, like the Falcon system and like all the boards were reviewed. Of course, everyone who doesn't know, Intel uh, and most of the OEMs and board makers we've talked to have basically said, hey, we're just going to replace all this stuff. So if you got this system, you, you can either buy the system now with this board, and later on Digital Storm will replace the board, or you can simply wait. Uh, I don't really think the you know bad Sandy Bridge chipset thing is an issue because Intel obviously is putting the money behind uh, their product here. They're going to pay everybody to replace all the hardware, so I wouldn't worry about that. So uh, anyway, this is a pretty cool machine. I really do want to stress this because I do want to see if Sandy Bridge will run stable at 5.2. Uh, we'll, you'll see more of that on MaximumPC.com. Anyway, this is Gordon with Maximum PC. We'll talk to you later.